view it. Um, okay, so my name is Ming Chen. I know I've been emailing you, calling you, texting you, that's all me. Um, the partnership and the missions. Um, so anything about the missions, financial aid, please feel free to reach out to me. I hope you saved the, uh, the text I sent you. It's also the easy way if you text me back, I can get back to you right away. And uh, um, we also have Maria. Um, she has been, uh, Maria, do you want to show your face? Oh, she's, uh, she will come back later. Uh, Maria uh, has been helping um, at admissions, reaching out to all the students who got accepted but haven't finished your financial aid. So that's her. Uh, yes, you, I'm here, Min, by the way. Sorry. Oh, she's here. <laughs> yes. Um, if your FAFSA is still incomplete, please get back to her. We want to help you get ready. And then last but not least, uh, Dr. Lisa Shess. Here we go, you have the whole floor. Oh, one more thing. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please raise your hand or put in the chat and uh, we, we will make sure at the end of the uh, session, we save some time to do questions and answers. You can also save questions to the end. Okay, here we go, Lisa. Okay, so um, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, okay, so let's... Let me do that. Okay, so uh, more, more share screen, and I'll do this one. Sure. Okay. So what I'm showing you right now is um, an event we're having, and I hope you all could come. Um, it's called uh, Power Engineering Day. Um, we've ha we have it every year except during COVID. We didn't have it. And um, so this is a, a really good chance to learn about our program and to talk to our current students, to talk to our alumni, and really get a good sense of what it is you're getting yourselves into if you come to uh, Benjamin Franklin. And what you're getting yourselves into is actually opportunity. So um, Benjamin Franklin, our program, we open up this incredible opportunity for you to become an electrical engineer. And uh, an elect electrical engineering, I mean, you might say I'm biased, but really I'm not. It is the best field in the world. It really is. Because first of all, um, it's so important. Um, imagine a world without electricity. It's, it would be a terrible place. In fact, if you go to countries that don't have um, much electricity, you find that they have much more disease, their life expectancy is lower, just electricity makes everything better. And also we are an electrified society of just about all the devices we use. Everything having to do with our lives has electricity in it. And you need electrical engineers to design those devices, to test those devices, to improve those devices, to fix those devices, to sell those devices. So it's, it's an incredible opportunity to be an electrical engineer. They make excellent money. You start out, um, so electrical engineering graduates are starting out, my graduates, uh, between 60 and 80K uh, a year. And that's when you start, that's when you start. So it just goes up from there. All right, what, you, um, what you're looking at right here is um, this guy, Chris, he's a graduate from our program. He went to the O'Brien School. Now our program had been at Suffolk and then we transferred over to Benjamin Franklin. So uh, Chris took classes both at Suffolk and at Benjamin Franklin. We had this un unique situation here. And he got, a, so he got an internship at this country, th this company, this is one of our partners, Phoenix Electric. And now he works there full time. And he's actually so busy that he's not coming to Power Engineering Day, but another one of our recent graduates, actually he's about to graduate, Kalanji, he works for this company and he will be here at Power Engineering Day. So you could talk to him about Benjamin Franklin and about his job. So um, I'd like you all to sign up. And I had this Google sheet, but Benjamin Franklin didn't like that. They said, no, don't do Google <laughs> sheet. Everybody else could see everybody else's name. So uh, I'd like you to uh, go here. Let me um, put this in the chat. 
and uh, so you should sign up because really uh, it is it is the the best way uh, to learn about what it is you're going to be doing. Okay, so hold on, let me go find the chat more. Um, here's the chat, and here I'm putting this in. Okay, so it's in the chat. So while I'm talking, please sign up to come. And uh, there's prizes. We have a raffle and there's pizza. So we're gonna feed you. And um, okay, so that's that's one thing. And now uh, let me, I'm just gonna go quickly through this PowerPoint I have. Um, I don't even know if I'm going into presentation mode. I'll just go quickly through it. And then I'd like you to ask me questions. If you could think of questions. Um, Okay, so I'm going to talk about our program. So um, here's my outline. I, I actually teach uh, also technical communications. And when you have a PowerPoint, you should start out with an outline. So here's my outline. So I'm giving you an introduction. I'm going to talk about the tuition free program that I hope all of you have heard about. Um, our job placement is still 100%, which is awesome. Uh, and let me just tell you right now, we have five graduates uh, coming up in May. Four of them already have jobs. And one of them who doesn't have a job is working in construction for his father and hasn't looked for a job yet. So, so you get jobs from our program, high paying, as I say, from 60K to, a, to, to 80K is where our alumni uh, first starting salaries range. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to tell you a, bit, a little bit about alumni from uh, BPS, because uh, most of our students are from BPS, but um, if for this tuition free program, you don't have to be from BPS. You could be, uh, I, I favor people, Boston and the surrounding areas. Not not me, the, well, it was me, I wrote it, but it was the, the this program um, prefers students from uh, Boston and the, and the surrounding areas, which is fine, because that's almost all BFIT students. And I'll talk about our faculty, and I have something about admissions, but I'm not quite sure what I have. Okay, so anyway, this guy, Dalen, he's one of our graduates. He's the one who doesn't yet have a job. He's actually working for his dad, but um, he's about to graduate. But he came in first in this MIT robotics contest, and he's showing you this little robot he made. So anyways, I just want to mention him. And these three students, uh, this, so this is when we were transitioning from Suffolk to, to Benjamin Franklin. So the middle one is a ben was a Benjamin Franklin graduate. He um, is working at a defense company called uh, Raytheon. And this guy works in uh, software. Um, most of our students don't work in software, but some do. So you can with an electrical engineering degree work in computer engineering, and that's what he's doing. And this guy, Chris, I already spoke to you about. He's working for Phoenix Electric, which works in electric power industry. So anyway, here is some uh, information which I didn't read to you, which you could read. Um, but uh, I'll go through it quickly. So our program is the fundamentals of electrical engineering. We emphasize electric power in the curriculum. We're the only E program in Massachusetts, probably in the Northeast that does so, so that when you graduate, you have a concentration in this field because they are really hurting for, um, for new graduates. So that's why we do that. And, uh, and it's a really important field. Imagine life without electricity. So uh, people depend on this. It's a, it's a very good field. And we also uh, have computer engineering courses because a lot of our students want to go into computer engineering, such as C++ and embedded systems. Our, uh, we have three full-time faculty. Uh, two have a PhD from MIT. One has a PhD from Cornell. We are fully ABED accredited, which is a stamp of approval. ABED is an organization that um, approves of only quality programs. Um, we're student-centered, small classes, and you have student coaches to, um, to keep you uh, on track. We're less expensive uh, than all private EE programs. We're, we're really this, this hidden jewel. We're, we're this hidden jewel because we're pretty new to BFIT. Okay, so anyway, um, so if you're part of our scholarship program, um, and I hope, I, hope, I hope all of you will be, um, we're accepting something like nine to 13 new students. So anyway, so the, this scholarship program isn't just tuition free, but it also, um, we have programming involved. And uh, the programming is, is, although it's optional, it's highly encouraged. So one of the first things we have in our program is a trip to Maine. Uh, and these are these are students who all went to Maine. I, I had the scholarship program a few years ago when it was at Suffolk. These are students who all, 
uh, went with me to Maine. And uh, the thing about it is you, we're going to learn about um, energy and sustainability, about wind, wind energy and about solar energy is what we do there. We go on a whale watch. And, but the main thing is it gives you a, uh, a chance to get to know the other uh, scholars, the other students, and to form a connection so that you guys will work together on your work when you when you come to um, when you come here. Okay, so um, uh, we're going to be reviewing in the next week or, or two. We're going to be reviewing our the applicants to this program. You have to submit a personal statement. Some of you have done that. Some of you have still need to do that. So just email it to me. Just a one page. Um, a one page essay about your motivation for studying electrical engineering. Okay, and uh, the reason why uh, I ask you to do that is because research has shown that motivation is an important quality to have if you wanna be successful in our field. Um, so here, this is a picture of these, all three of these guys are, are graduates from our program. These two are recent graduates from Benjamin Franklin. This guy in the middle is their boss. He is also a graduate, but he was our student at Suffolk. So he hires a lot of our students. A lot of students love this company. Um, and uh, they also get internships here, here too. The company's in Boxborough is why some students don't do internships there, but they're, they're really interested in hiring interns and, um, and recent graduates. But not all of our, our graduates work there. Um, so this is, uh, uh, so we have a graduate who's working at Raytheon, and then this company, and then uh, we have a graduate who became a software engineer, and um, Adam be, uh, went into um, defense, so uh, you could also work in the defense industry. He's a field service engineer, and he said something very nice when, uh, <laughs> he said he had four wonderful years. And uh, Kalanji, who you will meet, is an engineer at Phoenix Electric. And uh, so let me just give you more updates. I have a student who's working in Houston at Tesla. Uh, um, and then I have, uh, let's see, where else are they? Then, then I have a couple went to this company, Syncor. And, and Kalanji uh, is at um, Phoenix. And then Dalen, he didn't look for a job yet. Uh, okay, so that's... Uh, Pretty much it. I, I just want to say that uh, about this major, it is not an easy major. You have to spend time. Um, I'm just going to stop sh uh, sharing now. You have to spend time on it. So uh, where students really get messed up is when they spend 40 hours working at an outside job. And then they try to balance that with, uh, with our major and it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, you can't go full time um, unless I mean, I had students who work a lot, but uh, they are, their math skills are, are very high. So if your math skills are very high, um, you can work a lot, but then you also have to gauge how you're doing. So I have a student, he worked a lot, but when he felt like his. Um, oh, did you not see my slide? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Which slides did you not? Was I in the wrong thing? I'm sorry. How come no one said, said anything? No, we saw your slide. Oh, you saw my slide. Oh, okay. Yeah. But oh, but I have this uh, from Jenny. We cannot see your full slide. Oh, you didn't see my full slide. Oh, okay. Whatever. Anyway, so uh, as I was saying, working full time and studying electrical engineering or really anything else with Benjamin Franklin is treacherous. It's treacherous because people are not robots. Students are not robots. They need to have some downtime. And anyways, as that student, so I had a student who worked a lot of hours, but when his, he felt like he was slipping in his courses, he was able to cut back. So he did quite well. And, um, and he, has, he has a job as well. Okay, so um, I'd like to uh, now answer your questions. Um, I have a question. Yeah, Kevin, could you turn on your camera? Any chance? Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, okay, I'm so happy to see a, a face with the essay. And I liked your essay. Um, so my question was, what is your background in electrical engineering? My background. I have a bachelor's, master's, and PhD from MIT. I worked in industry at the beginning of my career. I worked at um, 
at Xerox. You've heard of Xerox. They were a much bigger company when I started out. So I was a summer intern there. And then I worked as an engineer there for a few years. And then I, I thought, you know, I want a higher position. I want to be more creative in my job. So I, then I went to graduate school and, um, and then I got a bachelor's in, uh, I mean, a master's. So first I got my bachelor's, I worked at Xerox, and then I got a master's at MIT. And um, I had a really fun uh, master's, master's project. And that was, um, that was, I took sound and then I changed the features. So I, I and they, we had tapes then, but I was able to, to change the features of the sound so that the voice became really high or the voice became very low. And I had this algorithm to do that. And, um, and then I made it into a chip. So that was my master's thesis. I had a, a fun time doing that. Uh, but then right at the end of my master's thesis, I had my first child and then I had a few more. And while I was doing that, I worked and I taught at Tufts University. I taught circuit theory there and I taught electronics. I also taught at Northeastern during that time. And then I decided I wanted to, um, well, motherhood is fine being uh, mostly home, but it's not for everyone. So I went to graduate school to get a PhD in, uh, at MIT. And I also had a really fun PhD um, project, uh, which was understanding how the, um, there's, there's little hair cells in your inner ear. And when sound comes in, they wiggle. And uh, so the hairs on the hair cells wiggle. The, the tall ones wiggle for the lower frequencies like this. The short ones wiggle for the higher frequencies like this. Anyways, I had this model that predicted how they would wiggle. And, uh, and it doesn't sound like electrical engineering, but the fact is the way the world, has, uh, the physical world is constructed, the same kind of techniques you use for electrical engineering, you can use for understanding fluid dynamics and mechanics. So, uh, you know, I, I'm an electrical engineer, I could do mechanics and I could do understanding water fluid dynamics too, because the techniques are the same because the physical equations are very similar. Anyway, so that was my PhD. And then as I was finishing up my PhD, this uh, opening at Suffolk opened for an electrical engineering um, professor. So I went there and I'm actually retiring from Suffolk um in june and um so i'm going to be full-time at bfit in september uh we we decided to move our program from uh suffolk to bfit because uh we really wanted a, a school that was affordable so we had the option to move it to other schools but we we chose uh benjamin franklin and um and here i am today Thank you, Lisa. That was a good question. Any, anybody else? Uh, so John had a question in the chat. He asked whether our program only consists of electrical engineering or whether it, it, it does. Okay. Right now, it is only electrical engineering. But that doesn't mean you have to just do electrical engineering uh, because, um, as I mentioned before, engineering, it um, a lot of similar techniques um from electrical engineering can be used in mechanical engineering and we we do have students who go on to become computer engineers uh and electrical engineering is very very broad so let's say you want to work in robotics uh robotics needs electrical engineers um my husband hires mechanical engineers to do the packaging of electric of electrical devices so um you know, the electrical engineering, it's its uh, a, the broader field. It, it's easier to get a job in electrical engineering. And uh, there's so many different areas you could work in. You could work in sound. I have a graduate um, who was who a sound engineer and you could work in computers and you could work on satellites and uh, you could work in uh, communications and you could work in electric power and uh, you could work in the car industry. I have a student I mentioned, he's a Tesla. You could work at uh, in electric cars. And let me tell you, all cars are becoming electric. That is uh, the goal. Uh, so um, they're gonna need electric, the electrical engineers. So um, every industry has to hire electrical engineers. Um, yeah, even as mundane as um, construction, because there needs to be someone to design the electrical system of the of the buildings that are being constructed. 
Okay, so Dave has a question. Yes, I'm so sorry. Good night, everyone. So, because my camera is not very No good. problem. I see you, I see you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, so I was like, uh, listen to what you've just said about students uh, from the electrical engineering pro program. So you focus, I really appreciate that uh, the fact that you focus on like student that finish it, like that uh, graduated from electrical engineering. So what about uh, the other student that get like just on entry level? like the AS students or AA students. So could they get job with that degree? So you're saying if you already have like an associate's degree, is that what you said? No, 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 if you just get it, if you ain't get, if you go like Benjamin Franklin and you get an AS degree in electrical engineering or an And AA then you can do whatever you want with it. There's so many opportunities. You could get, so, a, you could get a job in any um, company that hires new electrical engineers will hire you. And there's so many companies that do that. Okay, 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 okay. So it's, okay. yeah. You can keep going after I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the other question. Oh yeah, so um, we have a student who, uh, he interned in, in solar um, in solar energy. Uh, now he chose to go to Tesla, but he wanted to do you know, something with renewable. So that's big, renewable energy. They need electrical engineers in, um, in, in that new field as well and wind and solar. Okay, so my other question is like, uh, you were talking about the, the statement, right? And you said it's very important because you wanna, you wanna know the, the motivation because uh, it, it is said that the motivation gonna keep the person on track and, and achieve his goal. But the thing is, I was like, I love electrical engineering. But the, by the fact that I was like, most of the time I was in high school and in other country, not in the United States. And after, after I, uh, I finished high school, I didn't go to the university or college or something like that. It was like four years have been passed. And I was like, lose a lot of my math. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, okay. So we've had students like you. I have a student right now in the program who also is like you, but I think he might be older. Anyway, he also, he actually has a bachelor's in physics and he started, he said, I don't really remember the math. So I had him take a course that he, he already took in his bachelor's just to get him back up to speed and to refresh, to refresh his mind. And he's doing quite well and it comes back to you. And, and also we have a lot of support. So, um, yeah, we okay. have students, they come. I have a student also from Cape Verde's who also was um, out doing other things and uh, came back and uh, yeah, it's an adjustment till he reminds himself, but he's doing quite well. Um, I think the thing about our program uh, compared to other programs is you kind of a, a lot of attention from, from everyone. You get a lot of attention from the faculty. You get, a, there's a um, student advisor, you get a lot of attention. So that um, studies have shown, research has shown, uh, you know, you have a faculty relationship to students is also a, a key to success. So uh, yeah, you, you'll get back in the swing of things. I've seen yeah. it. So I think that's where the statement is, is important. So it's gonna keep you like motivated. It's your motivation. So once you motivate, so that's gonna push you because the fact that I wanna study electrical engineering and I, I lost a lot, a lot uh, I like, I a little bit forget a lot about math, so. It's the there, it's I there, it just has to come to the front. It's your brain still has <laughs> it. We just got to so bring it to the front. Mo it's, motivation, it's motivation gonna push you. Yeah, motivation yeah. gonna help you. That That's what I was thinking about. Uh, absolutely. Uh, let me yeah. just add, I had a student who was totally unmotivated, who partied, he got my scholarship too. He partied the whole time and he flunked out. <laughs> and that was before I asked for the motivation statement. So that's why I now ask for a motivation statement. That's great, that's great. Thank you, I appreciate it. And I have another question. It's, it's about admission. 
So uh, when I went to the United States, so I was like going in on in, in order program just to get uh, an, uh, an high school dipo- diploma from the United States. But I submit the admission uh, application, but I don't have my final transcript yet because I'm gonna get it in May because graduation is in May. So what can I do? Right All right, now? that's a, an admissions oh. question. Yes, I can answer that question. So like uh, any other high school seniors right now, you can submit your preliminary high school transcript without the final final grades. Uh, at least we can see the progress you made. And so submit that first, based on that, we can process the application. After you graduate in May, your high school ask your high school to send us the final one. So it's not gonna pause your application process. And then okay. financial aid, you don't have to wait. Uh, after you get accepted, you should do your FAFSA now uh, to get a financial aid. Okay, so I think uh, uh, you already get my FAFSA because I did, apply, uh, I did I made the application like uh, like four weeks ago and uh, you know I couldn't get the final transcript with the with the graduation uh, date on it because I asked it uh, the con- I asked it to the counselor and she told me that he couldn't send me like a partial transcript but he wouldn't have the the the, uh, the graduation date on it. But to have the graduation date, I have to, to wait until May 20. Um, yeah, that's fine. You can submit the one without the graduation date. That's called a preliminary high school transcript. And then submit to the final one after you graduate. Okay, okay, no problem. So, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, so, okay, no problem. I'm gonna go right away and do it. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you, Dave. Mm-hmm, you're welcome. Any other questions? I have a question, Lisa. If if someone has a background in law enforcement, how could they use EE? Uh, well, they, and do they want to become electrical engineers? Oh, I don't know. I'm just asking. <laughs> oh, well, background in law enforcement, they would probably have to start from scratch you know, because I don't know what their math is. So if they happen to take calculus. Oh, sorry, Lisa. When I said their background in law enforcement, meaning that they've been working in on, on law enforcement or they were young Marines, for instance, can they use that, you know, at some point to go back in law enforcement? Oh, well, I've had Marines. Yeah, we have a lot of um, uh, ex-army, uh, you know, military people in our program through the years. And... Um, yeah, they became, uh, they're, they're motivated. I, I actually, uh, the, our, um, our, our uh, former military students are like so motivated and they're more mature. And, uh, and generally they've done well in our program. So, um, but he would have to, you know, take the math. I don't know where his math is. So uh, if his math is, uh, he might have to start, you know, at the very beginning and get his math up to speed. Uh, Dave, you have another question? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm sorry. So my other question was like, you know, I'm not from the United States. So sometimes I I have to ask questions about college and, you know, university. So the thing is, I saw that like Bunker Hill Community College offer uh, an AS degree and AA degree uh, like and electrical engineering in two years. And after they said they're, they're gonna transfer you to Benjamin Franklin for, for a bachelor's degrees. So it's gonna take you like two years in the college at, at Bunker Hill and four years. No, uh, two and two. Oh, two, two and years two. and two years. Oh, I got you. That, <laughs> that, uh, that was my question. I got the answer. Yeah. No, two and two. <laughs> But we have a full a tuition free program that Bunker Hill doesn't. So we have this uh, advantage. 
I think okay. also I think also when you when you're looking at the difference between what our electrical engineering program can offer, um, we have a pathway program wherein students can, you know, do a certificate, earn a um, certificate in electronics technology, yes. take Definitely. those credits, I and transfer that into mechatronics, which is an associate degree. Take those credits and transfer it into our bachelor degree program, wherein you know students can come in and have three credentials in the time that most people will only have one, you know? So when you think about just stacking up credentials to make yourself marketable, that's something that Benjamin Franklin offers that no other college offer, which is the opportunity to come in and in four years, a little bit over four years and have three credentials where the average student would just have that one bachelor degree. I've seen that. And I have another question, so I'm sorry. <laughs> So my other question is like, if somebody gets into Benjamin Franklin to study like electrician, right? So after one year, she gonna, he gonna get a certificate, right? Could he use that certificate or those, uh, those things that he learned like has, has credit to transfer him into like uh, electrical engineering? Um, yes, uh, some of the credits will... Uh could be used for your circuits courses and your yeah. I think if you're talking about our practical electricity certificate program, uh, the yeah. can, cannot be transferred towards electrical engineering because they are two different programs. The courses you take to be electrician are different courses. Well, uh, though I think the circuits will take for our yeah. intro, you know, our, their circuits one, they take circuits one, they don't have to take that again. Um, okay. Yeah. A couple of course, not everything will transfer, but a couple will. Yeah, I was thinking about that. So I was like just buzzing, reading, reading about them and, you know, and try to understand them. But okay. that's great. That's great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Delingo has a, a question. Hey, so I didn't get a pilgrim for my FASPA and I, and I was wondering if, um, it, does that affect my eligibility on getting accepted for the scholarship? No, no, you could still get it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, we didn't hear from some students, uh, John and Rudy and uh, Nicholas and Gildo. Anybody wanna just say hi? Hello. Um, I kind of have a question. Um, I'm really interested in, in battery technology um, because um, I feel like there's a big problem that we don't have uh, good enough batteries, um, but we have enough electricity. So I was wondering- that is, that's, that's the whole problem. That's solar, wind, you got it in a nutshell. We need better um, battery technology. I was wondering if any students have got jobs with companies developing battery technology. Well, I have a student who's working at Tesla. I don't know if he's, I don't know exactly what he's doing. So I don't know if he's working with batteries, but uh, I think Tesla does that kind of work. Okay, thank you. We've had students though, who've done projects on evaluating batteries and their, their life span and, um, and looked at, uh, they looked at uh, how batteries do over time. Um, so you could do a research project in, in looking at um, in batteries. That could be your senior project. Okay, very interesting. Thank you. All right, Rudy, you said hello. Uh, to enter the program, we all we all we have to do is send you the personal one page. Yes, send me the personal one page directly to me and uh, your FAFSA, that's key because you can't get into the scholarship program without the FAFSA form. So you need to fill out the FAFSA, you need to, I think you, you applied and uh, that's it, the, the one page, that's it. Yeah, hi Rudy, I don't know whether uh, you, you saw me yesterday in your school or not, to ask you guys counsel to email us your transcript. Because I saw your application and uh, we, uh, we need your transcript to accept you. Okay. I'm glad you are here. <laughs> well, 
Okay. Um, Lisa, um, can you talk a little bit? I'm sorry if I missed. I know I came a little bit late. Can you talk a little bit about the um, NSF grant? Scholarship? Yeah, sure. Um, so you need to have um, a, a GPA of at least a 2.7 from your high school. Um, you need to fill out a FAFSA form. You need to have a uh, financial need. But most students have it because the cost of attending BFIT is like $30,000 if you factor in room and board and stuff. So that's most students have that, but you have to fill out the FAFSA form. You can't have it because I'm getting money from the, um, from the National Science Foundation, a federal uh, agency, and they require the FAFSA because the students have to have financial need. Um, you need to be able to take at least when you come to Benjamin Franklin, algebra and trig, because uh, you have to have some math ability. So um, at least that uh, most, uh, I, I prefer if you started with pre-calc, but you could do fine starting from algebra and trig. Um, and then some of our students come in uh, taking calc one also. But anyways, there's that. And then you have to ha fill out a personal statement to show that you have motivation. Okay, Nicholas, you have a question? So um, two things. Um, do you think you could put the link for the engineering day in the chat again? Yeah, be happy to. And then also, I'm a current BFIT student. I'm graduating for, from the automotive program with my associates. Um, so I was wondering, thank you. I was wondering for, um, for the financial aid, um, you said that you would have to have a two seven from high school. Is it different if you're? Oh, it's in different college? if you're a transfer student. So okay. uh, you don't need a two seven from high school. We're going to look at what you did at BFIT. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Dave. Yes. Uh, I uh, I didn't get it. Uh, you were talking about the grant. How does the grant call the grant you were just talk about, talking about? Um, I was talking about the, the National Science Foundation STEM grant. Yeah. Yeah, so what's, what's your question? I, I, I didn't get it, so I was like... Uh, you didn't get what? You mean you didn't understand something? Yeah, uh, you were talking about a grant, like something like $32,000, right? Oh, no, so this is what, yeah. So the cost of attending Benjamin Franklin, if you look at all, all the costs is... <laughs> In the 30,000s, I don't know exactly what it is. Calvin and yeah. Ian might, might be able to tell you. Um, so that's what we look. So if, if your family can't afford to pay that cost, then you'll be eligible for the um, for the NSF scholarship. But like if you have more oh, than $10,000 uh, a okay. difference, okay, 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 you'll be I get eligible you. for the scholarship. Yeah, it was NSF scholarship. So that's why I, that's what I didn't get. Y yeah, well, um, it's a combination of NSF and Benjamin Franklin scholarships. So we can yeah. we can uh, apply for it even though we already apply for FAFSA, right? So the only all you have to do to apply for it is send me a, a personal statement about your motivation, and uh, and you, you should have written down that you want to study electrical engineering, and that's that's the application process. Okay, so uh, I was thinking I said a, say, a statement. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe I, I, it was for another you know, college. So I, I remember I made a statement and I submitted it with, with, my, uh, with my admission application. So it might yeah, not I don't have, have it. it. Send it to me okay. directly. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So uh, your email. So I'll, so I'll put it in the, I'll put it in here. Hold on a second. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, any of the students who we haven't heard from? Any questions? This is, a, this is an important event here. This could affect your entire future. Okay, well, Dave, you have another question? Do you need to unmute or you're, you're good? All right, well, I've got nothing more to say, uh, but I want 
all of you to come to Power Engineering Day next week, a week from Friday. Um, so you get a, a good sense of um, our students, our graduates, the companies that employ our students, at least the electric power ones. So this is not all of our students go into electric power, but we do have uh, students who decide to. And um, it's a great field. So you'll learn about that field. And um, yeah. Thank you, Lisa. OK. Thank you, everyone. Anything about emissions and financial aid, you can reach out to the emissions office. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Elton, you at work? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 on my break right now. Okay, I see you getting the grind on. I see you. <laughs> good seeing you, Elton. You. Uh, we, we are so excited to have Elton back in the program. You have no idea. And I'm so excited too. I was Rockstar. talking to Claudino just yesterday. Yeah. yeah. How's your sister doing? Excuse me? How's your Sorry. sister? Oh, oh yeah, she's, she's great. She's great. She's doing well. Nice. Uh, see you guys soon. Okay, you guys. Uh, any other questions before uh, we sign off? Uh, yeah, I kind of have a, a question. I don't know. Sure. Maybe if uh, when I come back, since I have took um, most of my math classes, because I think I took it until calculus two. So do I have to take some of my classes back or? Uh, no, no. Uh, the only thing is you need at least a C in prerequisites. You need at least a C in prerequisites. Okay. So if you don't have a C in, in a prerequisite course that you would have to take over. So I haven't looked at your transcript. I know the last semester was shaky because you were working like a million hours. But you got straight A's your first few years. Yeah. Thank you again. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Nicholas. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Nicholas, I'm looking forward to having you in the program. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a nice night. Nicholas, um, what, what high school did you go to? I uh, actually grew up in, in California. So uh, I went to a couple of different high schools. Okay. Um, I went to a college prep for my first three years, and then I graduated from a, a public high school in my hometown. Okay. What town was that? It's called Petaluma. It's about an hour north of San Francisco. Cold. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I just realized that Nicholas is my student. Hi, Nicholas. Hello. Um, I, I just changed him to me because he's a rollover student. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Thanks, Nicholas. A um, uh, quick question, actually. So over summer, I'm taking... Um, algebra trig and then uh, pre-calculus to get caught up with my math classes yeah um, excellent excellent did you um, register and then... okay sorry sorry go on oh because i i got uh, andrew hall register already i just want to make sure you also register with the dean conak did you um i don't know okay i'll help for connect you because i know you guys need a math so you should register with the Deacon Cornock. Um, with with Sean, he said that he signed me up for the summer classes. Okay, that works too. I'll make sure you are registered. Thank you. And then uh, my question was, because I've been at school for two years and I still need to do four years for the bachelor's, is there any way that I could take more summer classes to possibly graduate sooner or lighten my class load during the semester. Okay, so uh, did you take like compos English composition one, English comp? They don't have to take that again. Okay. Um, if you wanted, so we don't offer a lot of engineering courses over the summer. There's statistics we require that's offered in the summer. Um, the math classes offered in the summer sometimes. Okay. Um, I don't think chemistry is offered in the summer. So you could take it at a community college too. Okay. If it's okay with BFIT. Uh, if you want to go taking courses at community colleges, like uh, 
Yeah, they offer chemistry okay. um, and, and they're not too expensive. Uh, if you want to, if you want to pay big bucks, you could take it at, you know, at, at then, another school. Oh, I will accept, yeah, to expedite okay. it. And then also, um, I know that that coding is a big part of electrical engineering um, right now. Would it be worth it if I have less classes, like because I already took Comp One and Comp Two? Would it be worth it to take extra? Um, computer science classes at maybe a JC or something like that to have that. Um, well, if you want to take C++, that's a requirement. So then you wouldn't have to take it your first semester. Okay. But here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I should say. You can't like say, oh, I, I took English comp already. I'm going to take an extra engineering course because they're not comparable. English mm -hmm. comp, a lot easier. Yeah. You take four engineering courses, you might have a nervous breakdown. Okay. Or if not, you won't do well. A yeah. lot of students don't do well. The, there's the exceptions that have extremely good math skills. But most students, it's a terrible idea taking like four technical courses. So yeah. you would take, if there's no other course to take three, three you know, you have to take 12 credits uh, is full time. If, mm. if you need to, so we could arrange for you to, to get 12 credits. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the information today. It was very helpful. Okay, great. Definitely. Okay. Have a nice night. Yeah, you too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, so Calvin, I told you that the students don't have to be Pell eligible, Pell Pell eligible to get the scholarship, right? Alan told me. So that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Hey, I am fine. So, um, so then, yeah, we have quite a few then eligible students. I was a little sad about not Nael. I guess he's going to uh, St. Michael's. Okay. Um, but there's yeah. still more students coming. So we just got new students from Charlestown High, Rudy, and then you mentioned Christian. Christian. Okay, so we got these new students. I'm going to reach out to the high schools again to see if there's any other students who... Um, didn't get the financial aid from their other schools who might want to come to us. Um, yeah. Um, Lisa, that Nicholas, um, I'm going to upload his BFA transcript to Teams so you can see whether he will be eligible. Okay. Not, uh, Andrew Ho, I didn't send him to you because I look at his BFA transcript. His math, he did a, like a C and D. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> if they do D's in the lower level math classes, it's yes. really a good predictor that they're not going to be successful in our program. Yeah, so the um, Nicholas got a B plus at least. So he should be fine. Okay. So with those students, we have to make sure that if they're really sold on electrical engineering, that we're talking about the electronics technology pathway to help, you know, um, build their confidence and, um, you know, learning skills in math. Yes, I have had students, mind you, who came in with low math skills and was able to su succeed, but they weren't working at the same time. So the, such a student is Alessio Kanani. Do you, you know Alessio? Yeah, I remember working. He, he was very consistent. I was, he was my student. I told him to switch majors. I gave him an F in circuits too, because his math skills were horrible. But he, he spent all his free hours in the academic success um, place, you know, doing math, getting tutoring, and uh, <clears throat> we made it through. Well, the math that I saw you doing today when I walked Jenny up there, if that's any type of, if that's the math that these students are putting together, Lord help me, because I looked at that I board know. and I said, oh, wow. This, well, this is the most mathematical course in, in our curriculum. But yes, it is very, very high level. My, my students that I have, only one out of the three is really up to taking the course. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, engineering. Very mathematical. <laughs> oh, the, the I brain. Mean, calc 2 is a prerequisite for the course. So, I mean, you don't do that until you, after you took Calc 2. Here I am walking Jenny around like, oh yeah. Then I'm like, hey, oh, we can we can peek in electrical engineering. And I looked and I looked at the board. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hi Mike. This is hi, admissions guys. team. And hi, hi. You're, you're headless. Hi. 
has a head. Oh, I do have a head, yes. He has a head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay. I booked a cure kit for me and I. Oh, cool. It's a pain in the butt. But... All right, you'll tell me about it. All right. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, we're looking forward to next Saturday, next Friday as well. Yes. Uh, yep. I'm a, I always get a bit of a trepidation before, but hopefully they'll all come out okay. <laughs> Marie sent me that new link. I was like, okay, I will text the students a new link. <laughs> okay, good. Um, if she didn't like that, I just had a Google sheet that they just signed up on. Okay, anyway, all right, take care. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, you guys for this opportunity. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Oh, Jenny, Rudy said that uh, Miss Hugh I met yesterday, she also sent Rudy's transcript. I expect her to send a Christian's transcript too. I'm going to give you both names. The recording is still rolling. Oh, That's cool. Start. We'll, we'll end okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. 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 You're looking good, Mian. Thank you. Oh, you know what?